Hello and welcome to Victorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today, to finish off our series on Rodinal, we're going to learn how to make it. Now, a lot of people don't make Rodinal. Let's face it, it's very cheap to buy if you can find it. But you might not always be able to find it. In fact, who knows what's around the corner? They might stop making it altogether. So, I found an easy way to make it by Pat Gaynor. He created a formula for Rodinal which really is simple and I want to show you that formula today. In fact, it's so simple, I'm going to probably replace the formula in my book with this particular one. So hey, let's get over to the darkroom table and start putting it together. Rodinal really is a simple developer and this is probably because Historically, Rodinal goes right back to the 1800s. So they really kept things simple in those days. After all, it was the, the pioneering days of photography. So what is it made of? Well, we have sodium sulfide. Sometimes sodium metabisulfite is used. Today we're using sodium sulfite. And it's the anhydrous version. I think that's the only version you can buy these days anyway. The developing agent in Rodinal is P-aminophenol. The P comes from this word para. P-aminophenol. Now you can get this in a couple of types. This is P-aminophenol base. And you can also buy P-aminophenol hydrochloride. We don't want the hydrochloride. We want this one, the base. And the third constituent in Rodinal is hydroxide. Now it's either sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. I've got plenty of potassium in the darkroom so I'm, I'm going to use this and we'll talk about alternating between the two later on how you do that. So that's it. Honestly three ingredients make up that beautiful developer Rodinol. Now I'm going to mix 250 milliliters of Rodinol today and I've got 200 milliliters of warm water here and it's at 24 degrees. Now you can use either purified water or you can use tap water if your tap water is pure enough. I'm lucky in Scotland to have really clean water up where I live so I'm okay to use it from the tap but if you're in doubt at all Go and buy some purified water. The last thing I'll talk about before we start making this is the bottle to use to put Rodinal in. And it should be a HDPE bottle. Now the reason we have to use HDPE is because we're using potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. And the hydroxides burn through PET bottles. So HDPE is much more resilient and in fact, if you see the Rodinal that you buy from the shop, you'll see it is also in a HDPE bottle. So we'll be using one of these. So first things first then, I've already measured out my sodium sulfite and I've measured 42.5 grams. So I'm going to get my water here and I'm going to add my 42.5 grams. Now remember, always do this in a well ventilated area with a window open, a door open, or do it outside. You don't want to be breathing any of these chemicals in. You don't want to get them on your skin. Now, I've been making developers for years, so I know how to handle them. But if you're not sure or you're new to this, just put on some nitrile gloves and work outside. So I've added my 42 and a half grams of sodium sulfite anhydrous, and I'm going to dissolve that in. Now, when you're making developers, and I've said this before in other videos, you really do want to make sure you dissolve each chemical completely before adding the next. Otherwise, you can get into bother because sometimes adding a certain chemical will stop another chemical dissolving. So you've had to dissolve it first. Now, 42.5 grams of sodium sulfite anhydrous into 200 ml of water is a lot. So this will take a little bit of stirring and a little bit of time to get fully dissolved. So I'll just fast forward the video now until this has all gone in. 
Now it's all dissolved in now. I can't see any more crystals at the bottom or hear them when I move the stirring stick around on the bottom. So I'm pretty confident it's all gone into solution. Now the sodium sulfide of course is an antioxidant. So it will be keeping this developer from going bad. And there's so much of it in there, it's no wonder that this developer lasts as long as it does. So the next thing to add is 20 grams of our P-aminophenol base. Now this stuff is not nice to breathe in. Look at all these warnings on the back here. So we really want to be careful. I'm going to take this outside and measure out my 20 grams and put it into the liquid. Once I've done that and it's in the liquid, it's a lot safer and I can bring it back in and we can continue filming. So be right back. I'll just add the 20 grams now. So I've added the P-aminophenol and I want to show you this. So in the top you can see there's some of the crystals just floating on the surface and underneath there's a whole pile of it. It won't dissolve. Now this is what I expect. If it dissolved I would have the wrong P-aminophenol. So good, this is going according to plan. The next thing then is to add my hydroxide and I mentioned earlier that I'm using potassium hydroxide and I'm going to add 9.6 grams of potassium hydroxide. If I was using sodium hydroxide I would use 6.9 grams. There's a difference and there's a conversion you should know between sodium and potassium hydroxide. That conversion is very simple but it's worth knowing because you can use these two chemicals in most developers interchangeably but you need to know the conversion. So if the formula calls for sodium hydroxide and I've only got potassium hydroxide I multiply the amount of sodium hydroxide by 1.4 and if the formula calls for potassium hydroxide but I only have sodium hydroxide then I multiply the amount of potassium hydroxide by 0.714 and that allows me to use the chemicals interchangeably. Okay, so now we're going to measure out our uh, potassium hydroxide here and I want 9.6. So let's set this scale up. Zero there. 9.6. Now treat all chemicals with a healthy dose of respect, especially these kind of chemicals that are caustic because if I get this on my skin it's going to burn and I'm going to have to wash it off as quickly as possible. So be very careful with your sodium or potassium hydroxide and I'm looking for 9.6 grams. That's 8.4, 9.8, so a little bit too much. I'm just going to take a flake off 9.7, let's take another one off, 9.6, that's exactly the right amount. So I'm going to pop the cap back on, there we are, put this back over here, now I'm going to add it slowly to my undissolved P-aminophenol. There's a little bit left. Now this is hygroscopic. It attracts water. So if I just hold it like this, I can just gently scrape these last crystals off the paper. There we are. I'm being careful not to dunk the paper into our developer. There. Nice and gentle. Good. You don't want to create dust with these chemicals. Now, I'm going to give it a stir and I can already see the P amino phenol is beginning to dissolve. If I can hold that up to the camera there, you see there's still a little bit on the surface. 
but as I'm looking at the bottom there's not a lot left. I can still see some crystals. I'm going to give it a stir for a few minutes and I'll fast forward the video. So after a few minutes stirring there's still crystals in it, a lot less, but there's still some. So I'm going to add a little bit more hydroxide, a bit at a time, until these crystals have almost completely gone. So I'm just going to get my spatula here and just add the tiniest amount, like so and then stir it in. Now this is what you do when you're making one in all by all the normal techniques. You just keep adding a little bit of hydroxide at a time until almost all the crystals have gone. Can you see there's still some floating around up there? I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm looking into the... Yep, there's still crystals floating around in it. They're quite easy to see when you hold it up. So I'm going to add a little bit more of my hydroxide and do this very gradually because all of a sudden you'll find the crystals have disappeared and you've gone too far. So just little bits at a time. The ones I can see on top are the easiest ones to see when they've gone still plenty of crystals in there. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm just going to keep doing this until all those crystals have gone except for a few. I just want to be able to see just a few wisps of the crystals. A little bit at a time. I'll fast forward the video now until we're at the point that I want to show you. So here we are. I think we're there now. I actually didn't have to add any more, I just kept stirring a little bit longer and I've got a few crystals left but you can't really see them on the surface anymore can you? They've almost gone completely. I'm just needing those few and that is me now at the perfect point. That is Rodinal. Just right. And I'm now going to bottle it in my HDPE bottle very important to use HDPE because of the hydroxide that's inside of this. And hydroxide can burn through PET, so always use a HDPE bottle for your rodinol. So I've got to make it up to 250 milliliters and then I'll pour it into my bottle. And that is our developer complete. So there we have it, 250 milliliters of beautiful homemade rodinol. This can be used just like modern rodinol, but I do suggest you do film testing. I find that this homemade rodinol means I have to run my films through a little slower than the modern rodinols. So for instance, Ilford FP4, I get about 64 to 80 ISO from that film. But I'm quite happy with that. This is a superb developer. Do your own testing to get timings. It's a wonderful developer and it'll do everything that the modern equivalent of Rodinal will do. 
I know some of you make your own Rodinal out of tablets like paracetamol tablets and so on and that's great but I'd rather show you how to make the real thing because there's no impurities in here whereas I just don't know what are in those tablets for instance. So now you've got a video on making Rodinal. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons for bringing this video to you. They bring all my videos to you and if you're interested in supporting the channel please join and become a patron of the channel. Thanks everybody and next week we've got something new coming along, something I haven't done much work on in videos with you all and I'm dying to show you what it can do. See you then.